So today we're going to be drawing this character. It's a red panda from Turning Red. And then we're not going to draw it exactly looking like this. I'm going to teach you how to just change up the poses. Uh, so in the future, if you're looking at a reference of a character or like flowers or like buildings or something, you can change it up. Um, so we're going to make this character maybe doing a different pose. So I'm going to sketch a different pose out. And then you guys can also sketch a different pose. But um, I'm going to give you an example of how I do this. Um, I'll, I'll, again, usually when I draw, when I sketch, I use basic shapes. So let me uh, explain what the basic shapes are. And let me grab blue color. And then I'll just draw those shapes right over here. So basic shapes is circle, triangle, square, and cylinder. I'll repeat this over and over again for every time I teach a drawing class so you guys can remember. We're going to make this panda look like it's um, dancing instead of just standing there. So uh, here's the paper. The paper we have is a vertical piece of paper. Usually when I sketch, I try to use up as much of the paper as I can. Um, this way, I don't have any wasted space. So we're going to make this panda uh, maybe like, you know, doing like flexing a muscle or something and then kind of like dancing or something. So I'll start off sketching the body. We'll just do the body like this. But that body is way too tall. OK, I'm going to put the body right over here. Okay, sketch, I'll sketch very lightly, okay? And then I'll put the head, I'll tilt the head this way, okay? And then I'll make that, um, the hand kind of look like, um, here's the shoulders, here's this arm, which is a cylinder, and then here's this cylinder, and then the fist, okay? And then the other hand, we'll make the hand look like it's um, reaching out to the viewer, so to reach out to the viewer, we're going to make that uh, this is something called foreshortening. Things that are closer to the viewer, the image is larger, and things that are further back is smaller. So instead of drawing an arm like this, we're going to draw the hand facing forward first. So I'm going to have that arm kind of like facing forward all the way here. And then the rest of the, uh, sh like the shoulders, and then the elbow, and then the forearm, we're going to have that reaching backwards. So here's the shoulder. Okay, if I had drew the shoulder there, it would be that much. I'll put that forearm here, and then the other cylinder right there. Okay, so this is reaching forward. Okay, the rest of the leg, I'm going to make it look like it's uh, kind of like jumping, dancing around. He, this character has short legs, so we can just fit that leg right here. I'm going to bend the cylinder like this. Okay, and then the other uh, the leg, I'm going to have that leg kind of like tilt up this way. Very small. So what I've done is actually, I'm I've taken this cylinder here, and then I'm bending the cylinder. Okay, so we're gonna put that cylinder right over here, and then bend it like that. And then for the bottom of the feet, we we'll just put uh, little ovals. Okay, just using basic shapes, and then uh, sketching everything out. Um, let's listen. You know, instead of making the arm do this, let's change up the arm. Okay, uh, let me get this. Okay, let's make the arm. Let's make the arm kind of go here, a little bit lower. So that's the hand. Here's the forearm, and then here's the shoulder. So we're changing up the pose. We're using the same reference, and instead of the head facing forward, what we see in the reference photo, we're going to make that head kind of like turn a little bit turn a little bit. So usually when I do that, I'll create a guide for myself. I find out where the center of the head is like that. So I, I'll just do a plus. So you uh, regularly, if you're drawing a character's head that's facing forward, that's a plus. But if you're drawing that head and you're turning the head a little bit, that's what I do. This is my guide. Okay. So once I have that, I'll continue sketching all the other areas that I need. This triangle that we have here, we're just going to place that triangle overlapping the head. We're not going to place the triangle on the edge, okay? Because when the head's turned a little bit, you see a little bit of, like for example, if you look at my headphone, you see a little bit more of the headphone. So we're gonna place this triangle in here, okay? And the other triangle, we're gonna place it behind that circle, okay? Things that are close to you are larger, things that are further back are smaller. Even if it's, if it's facing forward, it's the same size, but we have to think of what's closer, what's further. Okay, next we're going to focus on where this nose is. Okay, we're not going to place it in the middle of the head. We're going to look at the plus. 
Okay, this plus is here. So this head, this, this plus is here, but when we turn it, that center part goes over here. So I just place that oval right here. And then the mouth, which is almost like a, like a longer oval, I'm just gonna place that oval right here. Okay, just center that right there. Okay. The eyes, okay, I'm just gonna draw this plus so everyone has the reference. One eye on each side of the, the vertical line. So we have one eye over here and then the other eye right here. Okay. Now I'm gonna continue sketching everything out and then making sure everything is in the right place before I start uh, sketching out details. So this is just placements of everything. Okay, so here's the eyebrow. Uh, the cheeks are a little bit wider. So I'm gonna make this a little bit wider here and then also the other side wider. And then we also have um, the tail for this character. Okay, I'm gonna erase this. And I'm gonna make this tail kind of go kind of the same as a reference photo. We'll just have it right over here. Okay, so we have the, the hands, we have um, this, the nose, the mouth, the little nose right over here, like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase lines that we don't need just to make things a little bit more clearer. Erase that line, we don't need these lines. Erase this, erase every line that, um, Okay, if you sketch lightly, you don't need to erase it. Um, okay, here's this leg. We're gonna move this leg a little bit closer. Okay, I'm actually, I'm gonna move this leg a little bit closer, a little bit too far away. Okay, we erase this one. Erase this, this leg is a little bit too far away. So during the sketch phase, I'm, I'm just changing what I need. There we go. Okay, once I have that done, I'll lock that layer. Uh, before I lock it, I'll reduce the opacity, okay? okay. If, if you're drawing with traditional pencil and paper, just um, if you sketch lightly, you don't have to erase anything. If you drew it too uh, heavy-handed, then you would want to like use your eraser and, and score it a little bit just to erase it and soften it. But sometimes when I'm sketching at uh, comic book conventions or when I'm doing shows, I'll sketch hard. And then um, when I feel like it's too hard, I'll just grab an eraser and erase everything. It, as long as there's a little imprint that I know where my layouts are, uh, then I'll sketch on top of that. So um, I'm going to reduce it a little bit more because we don't really need to see that much. Okay, so very lightly, I'm gonna lock this. Now I'm gonna tighten the sketch. When I tighten the sketch, I'm just gonna use a different color so everyone can see what I'm doing. Uh, all you gotta do when you're tightening up the sketch is use your pencil and then kind of draw a little bit more darker, more heavy handed, just a little bit uh, heavier. So I'm gonna start with uh, the nose area. So the nose area, I'm just gonna sketch out that shape a little bit more. Originally when I was sketching everything out, it was just your basic oval. But this time, this is more of a triangle, triangle shape. So I'm just gonna place this, place that there very lightly. Again, you're still sketching, you're not drawing yet. Uh, you're still sketching, you know, very lightly. Here's the mouth. And then I'm looking at the reference photo just to make sure I have uh, everything in the right place. Here's the cheek like this. Here's the bottom of this. And then we're gonna continue uh, adding the, the cheek on the other side here. Wait, internet connection is unstable. Let me check. Okay. Okay, now, just like what I said earlier, things that are closer to you are larger and things further back is uh, smaller. So that means this cheek is bigger than this cheek. Okay, so right here we have this cheek a little bit larger and this one's a little bit closer. Okay, I'm gonna sketch this. Now uh, I'm gonna have the eye a little bit closer. My eye was sketched a little bit too far. I'm just gonna make that a little bit closer over here. And this eye is closer to the nose right there. Okay, just sketch that. And then the head, I'm gonna sketch out the shape of the head. It's almost like a, I see this almost like a triangle around the triangle. So I'm gonna go in here and sketch that around the triangle like that. Okay, okay. And then the ears. This ears goes on the inside. You erase this line because we don't need that. And then the other side, we're gonna place that ear right over here. Okay, I think I need these eyes even smaller to make those eyes really small, maybe like this. Okay, and then the eyebrows, I'm just gonna mark where I want the eyebrows to be. Okay, I don't see 
how the bottom of the paw looks, but usually um, cartoon characters, they have um, like three paws like that, like the bottom of the paws. Okay. So uh, with my imagination, I don't really know how it looks. I'm just going to sketch uh, the hand uh, kind of like going this way and then we have three paws here. Like that, and then uh, that's where the hand is going to be, and then we have the elbow. This elbow goes around here. I'll I'll do some contour. I I don't go straight line. Straight line is when I'm sketching out the layout like like that. But now when I'm looking at this, you, we don't see some of the curves over here. We only see it very slightly. This is the shoulder. Here's the arm, and here's the elbow. Okay, right over here, all that. So here I'm going to give that a little bit of a curve to the elbow, slightly curve. And this line overlaps like this. Okay. Now the other arm, we have the shoulder, very slight curves. I'm just going to sketch that in. Okay. I'm going to sketch where the stomach is. There's a the stomach. And then here, here's the arm. Okay. And then here's this arm that goes here. I'm just going to make it a little bit shorter. And then we're going to make him look like it's like, you know, making a muscle like that. Okay. So we have this, this part. This part, and then we'll just put the thumb over here. Well, he's not, he doesn't have a human thumb. Okay, does he have a human thumb? You know, I, I need to go and look at uh, turning red uh, reference points. So, T U R N, turning red, uh, P A N D A A. I'm just going to do a quick look at how that uh, turning red panda, I just want to see how his hand looks like anywhere. Okay, so it looks like okay, here's a picture of his hand. Looks he has five fingers. Okay, not a paw, like almost like human fingers. Let's see, let me see if I can find another image of. Yeah, right over here. Yeah, it looks like five fingers. So we're gonna draw five fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna change those five fingers. Okay, so right here we're gonna make uh, the palm of the hand. And then we'll do the five fingers. It's one finger, two finger, three finger, third, and then the fourth finger. And then here's the, the hand. We're just going to sketch that out. Okay. And then for this side, uh, we have five fingers. Here's this, this. And then, and then I'll just look at my own hand. Okay. I'm going to erase this. Use myself as the reference. So I want to draw the hand looking like this. So we have this triangle, the, this rectangle shape over here. And then we have the whole fist like this. Okay. And then we have the thumb. Okay, let me make sure I have all the fingers in the right place. Okay, so I, I referenced my hand just to get the hand in there. Okay, now I'm gonna sketch out the rest of the body. Here, here's the, the back part of the body. And then the leg, we're just going to sketch a little arch on the leg over here because it's bending. And then we have the bottom of the, uh, the panda. And then we have this leg right here. And then a little arch here. And then the feet. Okay, so we have this. This is the leg, this leg. And then I, I'm going to show you guys how to draw the feet. The feet, uh, since we have five fingers, we can safely say that with five toes. Okay, we're going to have this leg kind of facing out this way. And then this leg kind of face, this foot facing out this way. So I'll just draw toes as circles. One, two, three, four, five. The first toe will be a circle. Everyone, every other one proceeding after that, it will be like maybe one third. And then it gets smaller. Okay, so you have the five toes like that. So you have one larger circle, and then the other one you overlap, and they get smaller as you go further back. Okay. And then we have his tail. I'm just going to draw the tail. Um, like, like um, I'm going to move everything over. Uh, move everything over. Select dog. Move this over so I have more space. Okay, I'm also going to move the bottom layer over too. Just so we have more space, move this over. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to sketch the tail. We're going to have the tail, we'll keep the tail the same pose. Okay, like this, this little oval like that. 
Okay. Um, I'm also going to kind of mark off where it's darker, this dark area. Okay. So now I'm happy with my pose. Um, pretty good. And I'm going to go in there and start sketching and separating, which is the white part, the white part of the face here. Okay. And then the ears, just, just like that. Okay. Now that I have everything sketched and I'm happy with the pose, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing it. I'm going to get rid of my sketch that I don't need anymore. I'm going to reduce this on a computer. Uh, again, you can use the eraser. If you sketch lightly, then you don't need to do anything. I'm just going to make it like this. Okay. And then I'm going to lock this layer. And then on my drawing, I'm going to make sure I use black color. Okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see more details of the head. Okay. Now, when I draw, this time when I'm drawing, I'm not sketching. I want to draw a line that's as clean as I can, okay? Uh, as smooth as I can. No more sketch lines when, I, when I'm um, drawing. So I'll start off drawing the nose first because that's closer to the front. Okay, so we have the nose like this, and I'm still looking at the reference photo, okay? Then we have the center of the line, and then we have this side of the nostril, and the other side will be a line only because that um, nose is turning the other direction. Now we're gonna draw that whole white part because the head is tilted that uh, this way. This part goes up to here. This one goes around like this, okay? We draw that again. We have this uh, like this, okay? Now I'm gonna draw the mouth underneath it. Uh, we look at the reference photo. We notice that the nas, the like, the with the, the this nose part area is a little bit below the the mouth, so we're not going to draw the mouth line over here. We're going to draw the mouth line up here. So we're going to draw that round part right here, and then as I get to the other side, we're going to have this a little bit shorter. Okay, I want to make him smile a little bit more, so I'm just going to have this smile line a little bit taller, and then here we're going to have it up to there. Okay, I'm going to actually draw that again. I'm going to make my smoothing a little bit higher. So, right, we're going to go up here, go around here, and then just go there. Okay, now I'm going to draw teeth. The teeth here, the first thing I draw is the canine teeth, the larger parts over here, which is this one and this one. So that, I'm going to place one larger one here, and then the other larger one right over here. And then I place four in the front. So we have one, two, three, and then four. And then the other side, we're just going to place others right there. Okay. Okay. And then we have the tongue. We're just going to draw the tongue right there. After all that's drawn, we're going to draw the eyes. Okay. We're going to go draw the oval right here. And then the other oval, we're going to draw it right over here. Again. Because it has tilted, this eye is larger and the other eye is smaller. We're going to draw the pupil and the iris. We're going to have it on the bottom left. I'm also going to add a little white sheen. I'm going to zoom in closer so everyone can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to add a little white sheen over here and then the iris. Like that. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to zoom back out since we have the face already drawn. Um, we're going to draw where the eyebrows are. Okay, zoom in a little bit. So the eyebrow, I'm going to go and reduce this. Eyebrow, we're going to have it way up here. If you want to draw this panda, like this panda is like happy right now. If you want to draw this panda upset, you can always like make make that go here if you want to make if you want to make that panda really upset you can just make those eyebrow like right here but we're going to make them like a happy panda so right here we're just going to draw that line here okay now we already sketched out where the lines are the next few stage we're not going to be drawing the outline we're going to be drawing fur okay so right over here we're going to draw we're going to start off with the air we're just going to draw fur lines like this okay we're going to look at each of these lines to find out which direction that they're pointing at. Direction is important for when you're drawing fur or, or furry animals. You see, I'm going to leave these arrows to show you where 
those directions are going, like this arm over here. And I'm going to leave all these arrows there, like the, the tail here, this one points this way, this one points that way. It's very important that you see what direction that is going through. So when you draw them, uh, it looks a little bit better. So I'm going to continue drawing the fur of the ears. And then when I draw these lines, they're really random. It's just like drawing grass. What I don't want to do is make them crisscross. Okay, I'll, I'll go in there and I'll make sure each one doesn't touch each other. I can have some longer and have some shorter. Okay. So right here, when we continue, so there's some, some longer lines right over here. So I'll draw that. And then once I get to the face area, these lines, they start going downwards. And we're going to keep doing this all the way towards the bottom of the head. Okay, there's a, you can kind of see the shape of the head. So we're going to continue pointing. Very little lines like this. As I get to this side of the face, we're going to draw those lines going this way. Okay, make sure it goes this way. And you want the, those lines to kind of like flow the correct direction and they kind of like match up as, as it gets around. Okay, now the head, there's a little bit of fur going this way and then smaller ones going upward this way. And then we have these tips here and then we have the other ear. We're just gonna do the outside lines first. We'll come back and do the inside lines a little bit later. Get all that uh, holding line, outside lines done first. And then we have that part, okay? Now I'm gonna separate um, the, the orange part from the, the white part. And then I'm just gonna do that by doing the fur again this and then also on the other side we're just going to draw those lines like this okay now the fingers we're also going to be drawing the fingers as fur because based on what we looked at earlier the reference photo is five fingers so we already have the fingers sketched out i'm just going to sketch the fur part like this okay and each finger we're just going to sketch that out okay i want the fur to be pointing outwards Okay, that finger is a little bit too, too big. I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And then we have this finger, sketch those lines out like this. And then on this side, the last finger. And then we're gonna sketch the palm of this hand. Okay, so we have that finger. I'm gonna add a little line there. Okay, and then we have the elbow. Okay, look at the reference photo. It goes this way, goes this way, goes that way. Okay, so we're going to go in here and sketch this shoulder going out this way. Like this, and then a little bit on the bottom, and then we have the forearm, a little line right over there. Okay. Now I'm going to sketch the, the hand over here. This hand, uh, we have the bottom of the all four fingers. I'm just gonna sketch all those out first. And then this part here, and then now I'm gonna separate each uh, finger. Here's a pinky. Okay, here's the ring finger. Here's the middle finger. Here's the pointy finger. And then we have the thumb. Okay, I'm just gonna sketch that fur out. And then we're gonna continue uh, sketching out the rest of the fur here. There's a shoulder. And then here is uh, the rest of the body here, okay? Make sure this flows this way, okay? Now, the tummy area, we're going to look at where it grows. Look, this one grows this way, this way, this way. So knowing that, I'm going to have this. The body doesn't start up here. We're going to start the body maybe here, okay? And we're going to draw the fluffy uh, fur going this way. So have some going this way and then now i'm going to go on the back of the leg there's a distance between this leg so i'm going to start drawing all those in here like that all the way to the feet and i'll worry about the toes later i'll come back to it later i'll draw this line here and then some of the bottom part of the leg going this way this one i don't want that to go that high okay and here we're going to draw these lines this line go here and then we're going to continue flowing all the way to the leg. There we go. I have this one come out a little bit. Okay. I'm not going to have that much. I'm going to have some of the tummy overlap the leg. So it's behind. Okay. Now I'm going to draw the, the, 
the, the toes. So the toes, just a little bit of a furry part like that. And then the bottom of the feet. And then the same thing, a little bit of a fur around those circles, the sketch that we've done. Right over here. And then here's the feet. And then the other side, bottom of this, maybe the bottom of the foot a little bit straighter because if it's furry and they're standing on it, it gets a little bit flatter. Okay. We have the puffy stuff on this big toe. And then we have this toe and then this toe here, right over there. Okay. And then now, after we have all of that, we're going to go in there and do the, um, the tail. Okay. So we look at what direction is pointing. If, if anything you learn today um, is to learn uh, directional lines. Okay, we're gonna draw these tail here. This one goes, this one goes up, up here, goes this direction. You notice that when I draw these lines, I don't have any of them overlapping. They can go any direction they, they want. They, some lines can be longer, some lines can be shorter, as long as they don't crisscross. And they're all very random. Some shorter, I'll make some shorter ones here. I'll make some longer ones there. Okay, so there's the there's the whole outline of the panda. Now I'm going to separate the white part and the uh, the orange part from the cheek. Okay, we already sketched out where that belongs. So very lightly, very thin, very thin lines. I'm going to sketch this direction going this way. And as I get down to there, it follows the flow. And then on the other side, same thing. These lines are already, I'm going to zoom in so everyone sees. These lines are already going this way. But as I sketch those, I want to make sure they continue going the same direction. Okay. As I go down to here, I want to make sure these lines will match up to there. So there's no crisscrossing. Okay. Like that. Okay, and then the eyebrows, actually the eyebrows, uh, I'm gonna make those eyebrows kind of puffy too. So I'm gonna erase what I originally sketched. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna look at the reference photo. This eyebrow goes this direction, the pointing at the eye. So here, I'm just gonna draw those lines pointing at the eye. Like that here, and then we have this one pointing this way. There we go. Okay, we're going to continue drawing some of the lines. Um, when we look at the panda here, we see some of the fur, furry part over here. So we're going to add some of that in here as well. Curve those lines. Don't crisscross. Okay, and then we're going to draw some lines here. We're going to curve that line. And then because this part is darker and the part, this part here is lighter, we're also going to draw some fur lines here. Okay, same with the side. Okay, uh, same, we're gonna take some of this colors here, gonna, not color, but some of the fur there. Okay, um, now some of the arm area is a little bit darker. We're gonna come back to that later. Okay, we're gonna make sure we do all the fur and everything, do all the fuzzy stuff first. Okay, so like right here, this part is a little bit darker, this part is darker. Now I'm gonna do this in color. In previous lessons, I would show you guys how I did this with, uh, just pencil gray shading. Um, if you want, you can use um, color pencils, or if you if you like, you can also use watercolor. But you just have to wait for it to dry. Uh, I'm gonna go in here and let's see. Internet connection is unstable. Okay, so that's my drawing. I'm gonna go in here and start uh, shading in color. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is you can shade in pencil if you like. Like. Okay, go to my shading. I'm going to use uh, my color pencils or whatever. I'm just going to sample that color. That's the color. And then I'm, on my Photoshop, I'm just going to do, um, I'm just going to make it normal. Okay. I'm going to go in here and kind of, where's my brush? Okay. I'm just going to color all that one color first. Move this down here. Color all this here. Okay, with, if you're just using pencil, if all you're doing is pencil, just use a really light tone, okay? So what I'm doing is that if I was using color pencil, I'll use the side of my pencil and I'll just add all that lighter tone. Uh, the same color 
pencil here. If you're doing watercolors, you can paint that on top. There. Okay. And then I'll try to find a color for the eye over here. Okay. I'm just going to quickly, I'm going to quickly sample this and do all the larger color. Uh, the majority of this red panda is like more orange. So I'm just going to grab this color. Walden, if you use watercolor pencil, can you erase that if you make a mistake? If you use watercolor pencil, um, you don't really, you could kind of erase it or just add the watercolor pencil in there and later on uh, use water and dilute it and soften it. But you can't really erase it. With color erase. pencil is hard to erase. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. But when you're doing artwork, it's always okay to experiment. Like if you, if it doesn't look good this time, at least in the future, you'll learn from it. Okay, so I'm just going to add that color everywhere. Just the same, same color. I'm just going to paint that color everywhere. And then later on, I'm going to be lightening up the colors. If you use, if you painted this in watercolors, you can use more water on areas that are lighter and then use more paint. Like, for example, this area that's lighter, use more water and dilute it areas that's like more and more darker just go back in there and then add more uh, paint on top of it i'm going to continue um, adding that same paint throughout the rest of the, the panda okay i'm i'm i worry about uh the different uh variations of uh tones later right now i just want to get that one color in first Okay. Now, if you're paint, if you're doing this in pencil, what I want you to do is have the orange part a little bit darker. Okay, just press down a little bit darker so you have a different tone. There we go. So now we have the separation of the colors. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm going there and start uh, filling in. Actually, let's not fill in blacks. Usually I'll fill in blacks last if I'm doing watercolors. Uh, wait for that to dry. But if we're doing pencils, um, we're going to do different tones. Like this area here, this is more of a darker brown, more of a brownish, like a more of a reddish brown color, like on this area. So I'll grab that, that different color and I'll start adding that color on areas that I see that's really dark. Like, for example, underneath here. It's really dark over here and then really dark over here. After I add that, then I'll take my smudger and I'll start smudging that color out. Okay. You can use your fingers to smudge on a color pencil, or you can kind of like control how much, um, how much, how, how much pressure you can uh, draw with color pencils just to have it blend. This much here. And we'll continue looking at, so the hand is like darker, like it's the, the, the feet and the hands. So I'm just going to darken up this hand a little, little bit too dark. I'm just going to darken up maybe here. I would just create a halo around the fingers. Darken up there. Maybe go like this. Okay. I'll leave a little halo around the fingers. And then I'll take my smudger and I'll smudge the outside. I'll soften up the outside. Uh, and I'll stay within the hand. Okay, if some areas that I feel that I need to be a little bit darker, I'll just add more of that same pencil or watercolor here, here, and here. And then I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll smudge. Now, some of you may think Walton's using a computer to do this. I'm just drawing in pencil. It's, it's okay. If you draw in pencil, I want you to use a smudger and just focus on your gray tones. Painting, drawing, all the methods, methods are kind of the same. It's just uh, different tools that you're using. Okay. This hand over here, we're going to go in here and add all this darker. I'm going to go in here and darken up in between each finger. And also the thumb over here. And then the, the hand like that. And then I'll take my smudger and I'll just soften up some of the outsides. I, I'll try not to soften up the center of the, the brown area. I'm just uh, softening up the outside. 
Okay. Well then, can can I know uh, this uh, method use the watercolor the same, right? Yeah, watercolor same. So if you're painting watercolor, uh, you, what you do is you paint all the orange colors first, and then uh, before it dries, I would take that lighter brown and just paint on top, not too heavy brown, and then have that blend with uh, the background color. Um, if you're painting in watercolors and your orange color is dried, you can always paint the brown first. And then before the brown is dry, you use water, dilute it, and just touch the outside and have it bleed through. So those are two methods if you're painting in watercolor. If you're painting, if you're drawing in color pencils, just uh, paint everything in the orange first, and then use a darker brown and then draw on top. If you're drawing in regular pencil, just like a, a gray lead, just go in there and just um, draw like shade just really lightly around the the, face, the ears and then the cheek area and then the rest of the body shade a little bit darker control how much pressure you're using okay i'm going to continue uh, looking for all the brown areas so we see that the tail there's like three stripes over here there's one stripe second stripe and then third stripe i'm going to mimic those stripe by adding brown here Later on, towards the uh, ending of this lesson, I'm also going to show you how to create some of the detail on top of this. Right now, we're just creating a different color uh, tones first. So I'll, I'll paint this in, or I'll draw it in, or I'll shade it in. And then I would blend the outsides. Just the outside. I don't smudge, or I don't use, I don't use, if I'm painting watercolors, I don't use water to touch the inside of that brown, only that line only as close to the edge of the line as I can. Okay. Okay, same with over here. Only the edge. If you're blending, uh, use your blender tool uh, or use your Q-tip or use your smudger and only smudge the outside. Don't smudge the inside. You want the center to be a little bit darker and then the outside to be a little bit lighter. If you're coloring color pencils, uh, draw the center darker, uh, darker brown and then use color pencils to lightly shade outside. That's how you're gonna get that blending. Same method for when you're doing watercolors, just, uh, I mean, uh, acrylics. Okay, now uh, we're gonna go in there and see the shadow on this, this side is a little bit darker on, on, on the left side because the light source is coming, coming from here. The light source is coming from here. So with the light source coming from that direction, I'm gonna use that same brown that we've been using. I'm just gonna add some shadows on this side some shadows on the bottom of this uh, body here, some shadows over here, shadows on this leg. Underneath here, there's a shadow. Underneath here, there's a shadow. Underneath the neck on the left side, there's also a shadow, okay? Underneath this leg here, shadow here, like that, okay? And then a little bit of shadow on this side of the, the face. Now, everything I placed there is to show you where the shadow is and because of the direction of the light, the shadow is always on the opposite side. After I added the shadow, then I'll go in there and I'll start softening up. Okay. Soften up this side, soften up this side. We're only going to work on the panda's um, orange color part first. So take your time in blending it. I know in my lesson is a little bit quicker because we only have an hour, but you can take your time on this. I'm also gonna add a little bit of shadow on this arm just to make this arm pop out. And then here, I'm going to soften up that, okay? You can just go in there and smudge or use more water if you're painting watercolor and just blend the outsides like this and just soften it, okay? Okay, same over here. Yeah, next time, next lesson, I'll go back to drawing, uh, uh, showing you how to draw regular um, drawings with this pencil lead. But this time, I want you to learn how to kind of draw from a reference photo and creating creating your own pose. Okay, I'm also going to add a little bit more um, shading over here because I, I want some kind of different textures over there. Okay, so uh, I'll just add a little specks over there and I'll just go in there and I'll just soften, soften those randomly. Okay. Okay, um, I'm gonna go in there and work on the eyes a little bit. Yeah, the eyes, were, it's the same orange color. So I'm just gonna use that orange color right over 
here. I'm, I, I need to zoom in to look the color. Here's the orange color. I'll, I'll grab that color. Okay. And then I'll go into the eye and then I'll just paint the outside of the eye here. And I paint the other eye right over there. Okay, so we painted the eye. Okay, we're also gonna paint the nose. So I'm gonna zoom into the nose. I'm gonna use my sampler. This is Photoshop is so much easier because I can just sample the colors. But if you're doing watercolors or if you're using color pencil, you have to mix and match. You have to blend the colors. But uh, for Photoshop, it's just a little bit faster. So just add that color right there. That's a little bit too dark. I'm gonna make that color a little bit lighter. Let's move that up a little bit like this. And then we're gonna do that. Okay, I'm gonna start adding the blacks on the mouth. If you're painting in watercolors, do that last, okay? Um, but if you're doing it in colored pencils uh, or just pencil it, just go in there and make it really dark. So I'm gonna use that black over here and I'm just gonna fill that in just because I wanna see how the face looks. Go in here and just fill all of that in. Okay, there we go. And then now I'm gonna paint the, the tongue. The punk tongue is a little bit of a pinkish color. Just gonna paint all that in. Now we'll notice that the tongue here, that black merges into the tongue. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my smudger, blender, I'm just gonna blend it in here, have that top part blend in. And if some of that lightens up, just go in there and use black and just fill it in. Fill that part back, uh oh. <laughs> One of his teeth is broken. I'm just gonna erase that part. Okay, I'm gonna fix the eyes a little bit. Erase that extra part over here. Erase this part over here. Okay, now we're gonna go in there and work on some of the shadows of the white part. Okay, we have um, this part. Let me zoom in. Okay, I'm gonna take this color this darker tone, I'm gonna to make it a little bit darker. And then just down here, inside the ear. Okay, inside the ear is darker here. Okay, this side of the fur is a little bit darker here and also some here and on this side. I look at the reference photo just to see where it's darker. Underneath the eyebrows, a little bit darker and also this ear. We're just gonna add that in there. Okay, and then uh, on the bottom of the snout over here, a little bit of a heavier color like that. Okay, after you added that, then you go in there and you soften it. Okay, soften up here, soften up down here a little bit. So there's depth to your artwork here. And then soften up the ears a little bit. Okay, uh, I'm going to add a little bit more shadow on the top of this head because right now this head over here looks kind of flat to me. Um, I'm going to grab this color. Okay, I'm going to draw that color around the head right here. Like this, draw some on towards the eye. Okay, draw some on this side of the face. Draw some on the bottom of the head. Okay, draw some on this side of the eye. Just, just to give that flat image more depth because it, it was looking too flat. And then now I'm just gonna go in there and I'm gonna soften it. Okay, then go in here and just soften up this. There we go. Any areas that I just added that little bit of a darker tone, I just add, soften it a little bit more. Okay, same with this side. Some of that white speck, I'm just gonna get rid of it by smudging it. Or if you're painting in watercolors and you have some white specks, just use water and just run over it. Okay, soften up this side a little bit more. Okay, it looks like I need a little bit more shadows on this side and then more shadows underneath the nose. Oops, wrong color. Uh, this side would add a little bit more shadow. Okay, and then I'm gonna continue uh, modeling the shape of the head. There we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna soften up this arm over here. Okay, I wanna push this arm, this hand forward a little bit more. It's not 
I want that to go closer to the viewer. So I need to go in there and make that even darker. So the color that I use, just press down a little bit darker. And you can draw some of that in here. I'll stay within the fingers. And I'll create a halo around the fingers. There we go. I'll create some, add some shadows underneath the arm over here too. Now I'll soften up that on the outside. Like this, soften up here. There we go. Okay, soften up some of this. Let me increase this and soften up a little bit more. Okay, now next, next step, I'm gonna go in there and do some of the final details, which is to add a little bit more fur on some of the area. But before we do that, I want to darken up the eye a little bit. So um, always when you're drawing eye, eyes, um, always have the top of the eyelid a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go in here and then just use my pencil and just make that a little bit darker on the top. If you're drawing human eyes, animal eyes, uh, cartoon eyes, always a little bit darker on top. There, so now there's more life into the eyes. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you that, um, show you how that looks like before and after. Move my picture over. So before we did the eyes, see that it looks kind of like boring. It looks kind of like there's no life, but we add that little darker part, it looks a little bit better. I'm also going to do that on the bottom of this part and also the bottom of this part. Okay, now I'm going to go in there and start adding a little bit of fur everywhere. Okay, following the direction of the growth. Okay, I just add random lines here and there. Okay, just to give it some textures throughout the rest of the body. Okay, same with the legs here, just a few lines. In here, just a few lines. Okay. Now, if you look at your artwork and you see some areas are like not light enough and not dark enough, you can always use um, your eraser and kind of soften up some of the areas that you want it to be lighter. Or you use your pencil, uh, use a side pencil and kind of make some a little bit darker. Um, with uh, watercolors, you can use watercolors and kind of use water and kind of like dilute it a little bit to lighten it up. Or you can use more of the same paint and make it heavier. Um, I'm just going to go in here and use something called the burn tool and the dodge tool. The dodge tool is something where I can make things a little bit lighter. So because the light source is coming from the top right, I'm just going to make sure those areas are a little bit lighter. Like this, lighter over here lighter on this arm, lighter on this side of the tail, just a little bit brighter. Uh, watercolors, again, you can just go in there and just line it up. Okay, on this top of each of the fingers, on top of this arm, on top of this leg here, and the tummy over here. And then um, areas that you want darker, you're working with color pencils, just add more of that orange, press down harder or add a little bit more brown. Um, if you're working with regular pencils, just shading a little bit heavier. Um, watercolors, because I have more, more colors. And in Photoshop, I use something called the burn tool, which is, it just makes it darker. So I'm going to increase the size, the bottom left, a little bit darker, like this. Okay, bottom left here, bottom left, bottom left, bottom left here, a little bit on the tummy, bottom of the neck. A little bit over here. Yeah, that, that exposure is a little bit too dark, so I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit later. So I'm going to go back to my dodge tool to lighten it up a little bit. Okay. So that's, that's how I draw um, this character from turning red, um, this panda. Uh, I, I'm going to add some colors over here. I'm missing some of the colors. I'm going to sample that color, and I'm just going to paint that color over here. Okay, and then now just, just for fun, I'm gonna go in there and let me save this first. File, save as, let me save this. Well, again, can I ask one question? Sure. Uh, you, you put the uh, orange color in the body already. How, how, how the watercolor put the light color in, in the side? 
of the yeah. body. So if you already painted in watercolor and you painted everything orange already and you wanted it to be lighter, all you need to do is get a uh, water, just dip your brush into the water and then kind of like smudge over here a little bit and it will be lighter. Thank if you. you if you want it, you're welcome. If you want it to be darker, just get the same orange and then add a little bit of brown and then paint that darker like on this side. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, oh, this this yellow part? Yeah. So Sally yeah. asked, uh, how come the tail there's a little bit of yellows that you didn't paint in? So uh, yeah, I can go ahead and paint that yellow. Good eye. So I'm going to go there and paint some of the yellows over here. I'll paint some of that yellow on the edge. Actually, there's some yellows like everywhere. Okay, some yellows here and some yellows here and then uh, some yellows here. And then now I'll go back in there and I'll soften up some of those yellows into the orange. <laughs> yeah, that's good, good, good catch, Sally. Good, good catch. Okay, like this. Yeah. Okay, and I'm also going to add a little bit of yellows to his teeth, so it's not like a white teeth. So we're going to add a little bit of yellows over, but uh, well, that's a little bit too dark. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. Add a little bit of yellows up this side, and then I'm going to smudge some of that to the other side of the teeth. Okay, and then that that's the uh, panda. I'm going to make I'm going to paint the background just to show you guys how I do the background. Um, if you're painting the background, if you're painting watercolors, wait for the whole drawing to completely dry first. And then uh, once it's all completely dry, I would just use water, kind of like wet all the outsides first. And then once it's wet, just use a whatever color you like. If you want it to have this orange uh, reddish color, just paint all the outside first and then have that water blend in like that. So I'm going to do this on the computer. I'm just going to select all of this area to tell the computer that this is what I want to paint. And then I'm going to remove the areas that I don't want to paint, okay? So I'm going to go here, remove some of this, and I'm going to do this really quickly. Um, this is me telling the computer, I only want to paint the outside. I don't want to paint anything that's on the character. Um, it's easier to do by hand because you can control by your hand what you're painting and what you're not painting. Go over here. Okay, did I remove it? Remove tool. Oh, no, this is the add selection. I need to click the remove selection. Let me do that again. So I'm just selecting the area that I don't want to have repainted. Select all the outside. And I'm, and I'm doing this really quickly. Okay, going to remove this. I know, like, time is up, but I'm just going to spend a little bit more time here. There we go. And then right here, I'm going to grab the color color of that, and then I'm going to quickly um, paint. Let me see the color. A little bit, yeah. We're just going to go here. I'm going to go pick this go back a little bit, and it was going to paint the circle around here. And then I'm going to grab the lighter colors. The lighter colors right, right here. Maybe that light color. And then I'm going to use my circle and just paint that color right around here. That's good. And then I'll use my smudger or I'll use my paint brush and I'll just soften up over there. Oops, too, too big of a brush. Okay, so right now if it's too big to come, I'm not doing anything. The computer is uh, doing everything myself. I'm going to reduce this size a little bit here. And then I'm just going to soften it up a little bit. Okay. Going to zoom in a little bit more. Okay, um, let's see. Come here, soften this up a little bit. Takes a little bit more time. Actually, this, this, the faster way is to sample this color, make it go lighter, and just draw, draw another smaller line to have a medium value. And then take the smudger and then smudge uh, this side. Smudge here there, all the way around there, and then also smudge here. Okay, and now let the computer um, figure it out and do it on its own. Uh, it's, it's much easier with the uh, watercolors.
Yeah, and that's today's lesson on how I drew um, this character.